Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we do have rain warnings issued for later this week as we do turn very unsettled or at least continue to be very unsettled potentially even more unsettled and stormy towards the weekend and start of the new year. We'll have a look at that in detail on the UKV, look at the precipitation, the temperature and the wind gusts over the course of the next five days and then we'll start to have a look at the longer range outlook. As we normally do, we'll have a look at the GFS, GM, East and WF and the ensembles as it does continue to look fairly unsettled, fairly mild, or at least average for this time of year over the course of the next week or so. But as we head into the first third or so of January, we are seeing signs, especially on the longer term climate drivers, that we could see a change coming, perhaps higher pressure and perhaps blocking conditions coming back in once again through the middle of January to the end of January. Now again, I know that is extended range stuff, but it's important to have a look at this as the models will be very conflicted in what's going to be happening. We'll have a look at the GFS today, which actually does go for a Scandinavian high in the longer, longer term, something that the GEM and ESM UF doesn't touch on. And again, it's these conflicting climate drivers which we've got to decipher over the course of the next few weeks. So have a look at what's going on with the NAO, the AO, and the MJO, uh, three oscillations that can decide um, or at least reflect what's going to be happening over the course of the next few weeks. If you are interested in seeing what's happening in the stratosphere, another major climate driver, we did concentrate and have a look at that yesterday, as there is the potential for stratospheric warming over the course of the next few weeks, which also could encourage more blocking um, and colder weather towards the second half of January as well. So at the moment, definitely stormy and definitely unsettled over the course of the next week or two, but all eyes are on that second half of January where things could turn back uh, towards blocked uh, colder weather once again and we'll explore that in today's video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now if you start on the live radar you can see a pretty typical low pressure pattern southwesterly winds pushing in mostly rain but snow falling over the scottish mountains where well, we do have cold air trying to dig in but generally it is pretty average to above average temperatures with a lot of heavy blustery showers after the initial weather front spread through earlier this morning now these showers again not too heavy but a lot of thick cloud mistiness and murk out there and these showers pushing through giving briefly miserable conditions and again it's this typical southwesterly pattern with strong wind gusts in that as well and those wind gusts will only increase throughout this week as even deeper lows move in which also do bring heavier rain and there is a yellow warning for scotland for rain towards uh, friday I do think there will be, or at least I did think there would be yellow warnings issue for wind. We haven't seen those yet, but looking at the raw uh, computer model data, it looks 50, 60 mile per hour, looks quite likely, and I'd expect to see a yellow weather warning issued for that, at least for coastal areas. But we'll have to see uh, if that is issued in the next 24 hours or so. But yeah, you can see widespread showers around, and if we do put on the temperatures uh, as of around 3 p.m. this afternoon, you can see cold across Scotland, again with cold air trying to dig in, which is lingering just to our north. You can see Iceland is freezing cold and what we've got here is cold air feeding out of northeast Canada, Greenland and Iceland into mild air coming up from the southern Atlantic fueling these big lows out in the north Atlantic and Scotland is just on that periphery of colder air and that's why we're seeing snow of the higher ground there elsewhere in the south it's about 10 degrees not feeling particularly mild uh, but on the thermometer slightly above average now, if you look at the weather warnings, you can see there is a rain warning issued from 3 a.m. on Friday until 6 p.m. on Friday for heavy rain over the course of southern um, and southwestern parts of Scotland. Heavy rain bringing some flooding and travel disruption. Again, look at the further details 15 to 30 millimeters will fall widely within a 12 hour period, perhaps 60 to 80 millimeters. High impact, low likelihood. Could also be a bit of snow on this northern edge. Again, mainly over the higher ground there could be a snow warning issue of that just because of the intensity uh, and even though yes the freezing level is really quite high uh, at the moment really only hitting the tops of the mountains at least a few hundred meters up it still could cause some disruptions to higher routes 
Uh, I do expect, as I said, perhaps a wind warning issued for this. And of course, there could be further rain warnings elsewhere as well, just because we do have so much rain coming over the course of the next week or two. And even if an individual rainfall event is an extreme by itself, all the rainfall totals totting up over the course of a number of days, that could cause uh, some even more issues. Now, if we go over to the UK, we have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the course of the next five days or so. Now, we can see we do have that heavier rain that pushed in earlier this morning and snow on its leading edge and a lot of showers pushing in behind it with dusty conditions. Skies will clear briefly at, at, for a time, so less murk, of course, this evening, but of course it's dark, so it's not going to make much of a difference. And those showers just continue to pile in through tomorrow. Through Thursday, so tomorrow, it does actually look like it's going to be the driest day for a few days at least. Yes, showers still around in the north and the west especially, but areas further eastwards actually doesn't look too bad. There will be some sunshine around in the afternoon uh, and it might be actually decent to get out there. Uh, temperatures won't be too cold, but they won't be, t- be particularly mild either. And with a strong westerly breeze, it will feel uh, chilly. Now beyond that, as we head into Friday, another big weather front will be arriving. And you can see over course this evening, very heavy rain spreading into southern parts of Scotland and central Scotland there. Significant snowfall over the higher ground. Again, the freezing level could fall with evaporative cooling. But again, that will create very, uh, very marginal snow events for some areas. Again, mainly, I think, over the higher ground. You can see elsewhere, there is heavy rain pushing in, a bit of a line convection there, moving through Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, and that could give more precipitation in a very short period of time. Elsewhere, just heavy rain, persistent rain moving through through Friday afternoon before eventually clearing, and more rain in the southeast and some snow lingering in Scotland. Through Saturday, another heavy batch of rain moving through overnight, and luckily by the time it gets to the afternoon of Saturday, a lot of that heavy rain has cleared in the north and the east, but more rain is spreading in for the south, and that will become more widespread. So Saturday could be another quite miserable day for some. And again, more rain spreading through on Sunday, a bit of uh, line convection there, so probably a cold front spreading through for the 1st of January. And we start the new year in the southeast, it could be quite horrible with a lingering weather front, but elsewhere... Uh, for New Year's Day, it actually might not be too bad on Sunday for eventually, before we eventually see more precipitation probably through, move through early next week. Now, if you put on the wind gusts, uh, the wind is really going to start gusting over the course of the next 24 hours or so. You see, gusts are pretty strong at the moment along the south coast, maybe 50, 60 miles per hour, but will become more widely gusty over the course of this evening into tomorrow with 50 miles per hour perhaps coming in land, maybe 60 or even 70 miles per hour for coastal areas through tomorrow. Maybe into parts of Scotland, some very strong winds through tomorrow afternoon. Could be blizzard conditions over the higher ground. And as we head into Friday as well, another batch of very strong wind through the morning for Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland. Those strong wind speeds continue all the way through Saturday, but it does look likely through Saturday afternoon. It could die down a little bit with still unsettled conditions about, but those very small, uh, intense central low pressure systems do uh, to start to move away. So we are in a general unsettled flow, westerly flow, but we're not under the very strong winds we do have over the next few days. So it could die down a little bit for New Year's Day and maybe the 2nd of January. If we put on the temperatures, it will be very much up and down over the course of the next few days. Still very cold across Scotland, but again, that's not too unusual. On the thermometer, it's going to be towards the freezing mark. But again, we are sort of getting into the peak winter now. So those sort of temperatures are normal. Uh, and snow falling over the higher ground is normal. Elsewhere, it will generally be average. But there will be days of milder than average and days of a couple of degrees below average. Now, you can see that today, this afternoon, temperatures are very much average to above average, widely 10 to 12 degrees in the south, freezing in the north. And into tomorrow... We've got heavy rain, of course, and by the afternoon, you can see more trending to average to below average. Many areas, maybe four to six degrees, maybe seven or eight in the far east, colder in the north. So you can see how these temperatures are not going to be anything exceptional. They're not going to be exceptionally mild or exceptionally cold, but they're going to sort of oscillate above and below average. As we head into Friday, perhaps a frost for areas in the north, and through Friday afternoon, you can see actually milder again, 10 to 12 degrees in the south, cooler in the north, um, and parts of Ireland as well. Into Saturday, very cold in the north, um, quite a cold air mass pushing in there, the far south, maybe 10 or 12 degrees, and then sort of a gradient down the country from below average in the north to sort of average through the Midlands, and above average in the far south. 
And as we headed through Sunday, very cold across Scotland there. Seeing temperatures in around minus 10 to minus 15, perhaps. So pretty cold air mass spreading in. But it is very much a transient air mass. So it's not going to dig in and it's really going to give cold conditions for a day or two. And into the 1st of January, widely average 5, 6, to, uh, 7, 8 degrees. Maybe slightly milder in the south. And of course, a lot colder in the north. And that continues into Monday where that cold air does spread more southwards. So Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, North England, Wales and most of Scotland are going to be seeing a frost wake up on the 2nd of January. But again, if we put on the upper air temperatures... Uh, it's nothing exceptional, and it is just a brief cold air mass pushing in from the northwest, and will likely be shoved away by a low pressure system later uh, later on on Monday or into Tuesday. Now, if you go and have a look at the longer range forecast now. Before we go into the main models, I do want to have a look at the various oscillations. Now, if we do start on the NAO, which is the North Atlantic Oscillation, again, uh, I've gone through this a lot through the winter look ahead, so if you do want to have uh, an explainer of that, do check out the winter look ahead. We will briefly explain what it's showing, uh, but we'll get on to other stuff uh, quickly as well. So, a positive NAO basically means unsettled. Uh, low pressure in the North Atlantic or above average low pressure in the North Atlantic uh, and a strong Azores high as well. So very strong westerly flow. A negative NAO means more amplification, more higher pressure towards the North Atlantic, a weaker Azores high, meaning the jet stream sort of gets split and amplifies as well. And it sort of causes a bit of a mess in the North Atlantic in terms of high pressure, low pressure, not this strong westerly gradient. And generally, a negative NAO accompanies cold block conditions, a positive NAO uh, accompanies mild, wet and windy conditions in from the west. Now you can see that cold spell we had for the first two weeks of December, very much a negative NAO there. You can see from the 1st all the way to the 15th we were below zero in terms of the NAO uh, and that meant the North Atlantic was blocked, we didn't see westerly conditions push in and we stayed in a north or easterly airflow and it was very cold. And you can see as we head towards the 15th and towards the Christmas period, we did see it return more towards neutral slash slightly positive. So westerly momentum gained, but not enough to mean cold spells completely eliminated and it was mild all the time. And that's why recently it has generally been average or maybe above average, but we still have had colder air masses pushing in at times and some amplification. But you can see the last few days and into the new year, it is firmly into the positive territory that's why it's quite mild wet and windy with very few cold air masses spreading southwards at all it does though as we head through the first couple of weeks of january look likely to trend more towards average uh, sorry towards uh, zero and more uh, perhaps towards negative territory as well we very much need to see this go properly negative to see any more cold weather and that's why i think over the course of the next 10 to 14 days Anything remotely cold uh, widely is ruled out, really, just because the NAO does not look likely to go uh, negative at all, apart from the odd few ensemble members. But it is trending more towards zero, so it is trending away from the big Atlantic, uh, Atlantic onslaught. And, as we'll address with the MJO in a second, perhaps the drivers of the North Atlantic Oscillation could be trending at negative as well through the middle of January. So that's why I do think that perhaps, even though it looks quite dire outlook at the moment, we definitely could turn more blocks and cold towards the second half of the month. Now if we do go to the AO, which is the Arctic Oscillation, which is looking at the blocking over the Arctic. Now, when we do have a big positive AO, we do have very strong low pressure, very little blocking and higher pressure over the Arctic. And that, again, encourages a strong westerly flow, strong gradient from low pressure over Iceland and Greenland and higher pressure towards the Azores. And again, a big westerly flow. But the Arctic Oscillation uh, generally does uh, talk about the whole of the Arctic. So sometimes you can see a very negative AO, which would suggest a lot of blocking over the Arctic. And you can actually see nothing cold in the UK because the NAO is positive. So in our sector of the Northern Hemisphere, it's not quite primed for colder weather, but other areas it is. So you can see throughout pretty much middle to end of November, all the way till now really, we've been in a very negative AO territory. And that's why pretty much for the last month to six weeks, we have had a lot of cold 
weather outputs from the various models and of course we saw that colder spell through the first two weeks of December and that's why during that spell we thought it could continue all the way to, through to Christmas because the AO was suggesting that blocking remaining but of course as you saw with the NAO it trended positive again and that meant the Atlantic systems were able to come in. So the AO is still generally primed for cold weather and you can see it is briefly neutral at the moment again encouraging a westerly flow but it will trend negative once again through January. So AO definitely going back towards the negative territory, again perhaps promoting blocking and colder weather. And of course, yes, we have had a negative AO the last week or so, and that's why we saw the huge cold out cold outbreak in North America, because all that cold air spilled out, but it wasn't particularly primed for anything cold for the UK. So you can see, yes, the NAO is probably the the limiting factor at the moment for anything more amplified, cold and blocked, but the, at least it could be trending more towards neutral, maybe more negative, as we'll address in a minute. And of course, the AO as well uh, is remaining fairly negative, again, encouraging blocking in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, if we do go over to the MJO, which is something we haven't really looked at before, uh, and it's something not, not too, many, too many people understand, because it's sort of something that actually feeds into the NAO. It's a precursor of the NAO. Now, if you're interested, you should go over and have a look on the Net Office website. They've got a good uh, weather page explaining uh, that. Uh, and the MJO um, is the Madden Julian Oscillation. Um, and it, it, it's basically describing the uh, enhanced rainfall and convection over areas in the mid latitudes towards uh, towards sort of the equator area. And the MJO can have a wide range of impacts on global weather conditions. It's associated with the Atlantic hurricane system. Uh, of course, if you have an MGO that favours more convection in the central part of the Atlantic, it could enhance the Atlantic uh, hurricane season. It could also, you know, enhance rainfall phases, could uh, help monsoon seasons, or could actually suppress uh, and delay monsoon seasons. It could also affect uh, the ENSO region, so El Nino and La Nina cycles. And of course, it could also have a look at sudden stratospheric warming, something we won't have a look at today, but something we could have a look at in future videos when we do address uh, the warming in the stratosphere once again. But when it's active, uh, in different phases, it can have a significant effect on the North Atlantic Oscillation. A positive NAO, um, which is what we have at the moment, is normally preceded by a few weeks by phases 3 and 4 of the MJO. And when I say a phase, that's just the location of the enhanced rainfall and enhanced convection. A negative NAO, which is blocked conditions, is more preceded by phases 6 or 7. So sometimes we can have a look at the MJO and say it's forecasted to go into phases 6 and 7. That will most likely be followed by a negative NAO, perhaps in 10 to 14 days' time. Now, if we have a look at the chart we've got up at the moment, this is, uh, again, showing a forecast track of the MJO. You can see the start, and that is the start of the, sort of the period, and you can see how it goes from all the way through the end of November in the purple, through the reds, which is showing December, and you can see how it went through all the phases in a cyclical pattern, and now it's heading into, uh, and now the forecast is the green line, and you can see the green line over the course of the next two weeks is in phases six and phases seven, which is generally associated, as I said, with a colder, drier period, and a negative NAO. Now you can see all the yellow lines, again, those are different forecasts, are different ensemble members, and you can see they are all over the place, but most do go into phase in six and seven quite significantly for a time and the green line of course being the operational run and you can see that is very much stuck in phase in six and seven over the course of the next few weeks as i said though its influence on the nao is sort of a 10 to 14 day time frame so you can see it's probably into phase of six and seven perhaps in the next few days next week or so and then that's why we do think perhaps the middle to second half of january the nao could trend negative again now i said I don't have enough time really to explain everything about this, but of course if you do want more information make sure you do head over to the Met Office website, they've got a good weather page looking at this uh, in, in quite significant detail, uh, and again head over to this website as well, this is from theweatheriscool.com, linked in the description, again you can have a look at these charts yourself and, and watch it over the course of the next few weeks. But definitely from this latest forecast on the 28th it does look likely to head into phases 6 and 7 which will encourage a negative NAO through the middle of uh, middle of January. 
And of course, coupled with the negative AO, that's why we think blocking could come back. Perhaps a Scandinavian high is favoured. And that's why, as I said, mild and westerly over the course of the next few weeks, perhaps colder and blocked more towards the middle of January. Now, of course, that's not really in the time frame of the models at the moment, but it is something we do need to keep an eye on over the course of the next week or so as it does start to come into the time frame. So we do start, by now I look at the long range charts, I look at the GFS, GEM, ECM, WF, and the ensembles, you can see a westerly flow at the moment with strong low pressure systems to our north. Very unsettled, generally quite stormy conditions over the course of the end of December and start of the new year. As we head into January though, you can actually see the blocking starting to appear towards Scandinavia and perhaps up towards Svalbard and Siberia from the latest GFS. And again, this is a sign that that blocking could return and this is definitely a signal for a negative AO, not a negative NAO though, because you can see a very strong contrast here in the North Atlantic. So this is definitely uh, following on from, those, uh, from that forecast for a negative AO to come back into force or quite a strong negative AO. And this will try and force cold air uh, through Eastern Europe towards the UK, but the NAO here is definitely favouring a westerly flow. And that's why, if the NAO did trend negative, we very much could be looking at a colder spell towards the middle of January and end of January. But on the latest model, it does look generally mild and westerly. But I do think we will see a lot of conflicting charts in the next few days, in the next week or two, as we start to see these things come into play. But definitely, the next week or two, definitely does look likely to be a mild and westerly uh, sort of pattern. If we look at the GM, see how that does compare again, only goes out to day 10, so again, wouldn't likely see many signs of any changing pattern, and you can see mild and westerly uh, with small low pressure systems moving through quite severe low there, potentially through the 2nd of January. Again, need to keep our eyes on that, the UK, we didn't have that, uh, so it just showing you the uh, uncertainty even in the next five days. And like towards day 10, there is blocking, or at least higher pressure systems starting to return to the Northern Hemisphere. You can see uh, a high pressure system trying to build in the Arctic. Again, nothing too strong at this stage, but signs that the uh, dropospheric polar vortex is starting to get disruptive, uh, disrupted as well. But general outlook is still mild and westerly. If we do have a look at the UKV, uh, sorry, the Eastern WF, and have a look what that's showing, again, a westerly flow at the moment. Generally very unsettled, as I said, and as we head towards day 10, quite a mild westerly pattern. A little bit more amplification there in the jets, driving more of a southwesterly here, but signs perhaps of a bit more of a change than just a flat westerly where you do have. And again, if we have a look at the north and hemisphere view, you can see there is more higher pressure building in and more amplification in this black line, which is the general jet stream around the northern hemisphere. So again, perhaps signs of a change as we head into January. But by all means, we're not going to be seeing anything remotely blocked and cold for at least 10 to 14 days, perhaps uh, even longer into the middle of January. So if you do enjoy mild conditions, if you do enjoy the wet and windy, which I don't think many people do, but it may be more favoured than the cold uh, cold and snowier weather, the next couple of weeks is the weather for you. If you're looking forward to some colder, snowier weather, perhaps middle of January towards the end of January. Now, if you do look at the ensembles, you can see generally uh, from the GFS ensembles here for London, up and down, generally below and slightly, or slightly below and mostly above average over the course of the next week or two. Um, and again, it won't feel all too mild at times. There will be some mild spells that do feel mild, but most of the time, even if it's 10 degrees on the thermometer, it will feel pretty chilly. You can see operational GFS there very much up and down, just showing how uh, how much it's going to be uh, just completely up and down in terms of the air masses. But there are a few ensemble members in the longer term that do build that higher pressure system a bit more vigorously, that do pull in easterly winds. But again, I don't think there's much weight in that. I think that's just signs of some ensemble members catching on to this MJO uh, phase 6 and 7, turning the a a a negative NAO and the AO as well getting those trends a little bit earlier than the majority of ensemble members have it. So that's some of the first signs coming in around the 10th to the 15th of January, maybe of colder weather appearing, but again, nothing particularly substantial at this stage. It does look turn, look turning perhaps slightly drier though, a bit more amplification in the jet stream in the longer term with the AO turning negative, um, even though it won't change our weather patterns too much it could just mean some areas in the south and the east do escape the heaviest rainfall and that's why seeing a slight drying trend in the longer term and if we look at the ECMWF on summer members again generally above average 
slightly slight drying trend in the longer term, but nothing substantial. A majority of runs are pretty mild, a few colder runs, but again, that's the same as the GFS ensembles. So for sort of the short to mid time frame, it does look generally mild, unsettled, and westerly. Signs though, as we head into January, not only is there a warming in the stratosphere looking likely, but with uh, with the North Atlantic oscillation could be turning negative. AO definitely looks, looks like it's turning negative, but the NAO could be turning negative as well with the MJO going into phase six and seven, phase six and seven, and that is something we do need to keep a close eye on over the course of the next week or so as it does develop. And I do think even if it doesn't come off, if we don't see a cold spell into the middle and the end of January, I do think we'll be starting to see very interesting charts in the next week or so as operational runs and also members start to jump on to what could be happening in the North Atlantic. Um, and yeah, it might not come off, but I do think we will start to see cold and snowy charts appearing once again in perhaps the next week or so. So we'll have to see what happens. There definitely is chances, again, for something cold and snowy. And a lot, I know a lot of people watching this probably would like some cold, more cold and snowy. Because, yes, the cold spell we had in December was widely very cold. did have some heavy snow in places, but it wasn't particularly widespread in terms of that snow. Well, places saw snow, they saw significant snow, but many areas didn't see a lot at all. So I know some people still will want some snow coming. And there is the potential there through the second half of January. And we'll have to see exactly what happens. But as ever, so many different drivers uh, all coming up against each other. Um, and we'll just have to see if things do fall into place uh, and how they do fall over the course of the next few weeks. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Stay safe out there in the quite unsettled and stormy conditions over the course of the next week or so. And I'll see you again for another video soon.